we always hear the term fake it till you make it and we assume that that is something that in America or in Western culture is something we should follow through with because eventually if we work really hard and pretend to be what we're not, we will eventually get there. However, that is not always the case. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hi, my name is Zaria Smith and I typically make commentary videos just like this one. Um, today's candle is Caramel Pumpkin Swirl. Um, yes, we are still in the fall mood. I know everybody else is excited for Christmas, but I couldn't really care about Christmas at all. So we're <laughs> still, we're going to be with fall until we have no choice until December. Um, but happy late Halloween. I hope you had an amazing Halloween and you were safe and living your best life. And speaking of Halloween, you know, we on Halloween dress up as something that we are not. It got me thinking about being something that you're not. And recently, um, Ethan Klein from the H3H3 podcast was mentioning about how Trisha Paytas, his ex-best friend, um, I guess did a music video and spent like $200,000 on it despite um, not really raking in the amount of views that kind of solicit spending that much money on a music video. With that, and with everything combined, I kind of wanted to talk about the concept of fake it till you make it and how this ideology is ruining social media. I know, crazy, <laughs> crazy, very extreme, but you know, we, we're gonna get into it, yeah. So, fake it till you make it. We hear it time and time again. I'm sure your grandmother or your mother or your dad or your grandfather or your great-grandmother has said this to you at least once. Fake it till you make it. Now, fake it till you make it can mean a variety of things. Like, for instance, if you are going on to a play and you're scared of being perceived, like, <laughs> like most people, fake it till you make it. Fake it like you want to be perceived or you're not feeling confident, fake your confidence and you will feel it. Um, if you don't feel like you're beautiful, pretend that you're beautiful and then you will be become it. You know, basic, lovely, nice things that don't have such horrible implications or, you know, affect your life so drastically bad. And I think that in terms of that, I think it's you make it as something that is a very positive, you know, thought process to have. However, throughout the years and the decades, some people take fake it till you make it so hard that they end up on Squid Game, like saying woo. I feel like such a dumb American. It's song woo, not saying woo. God, I'm such a southerner. I'm I'm so sorry. I, I'm trying to make a joke and I pronounced it wrong. That's so dumb. You know, or they end up like Jordan Belfort. Belfort? Belfort. The Wolf of Wall Street guy, you end up like him and in jail. You know, you end up buying expensive houses, expensive cars, and getting them repossessed. It, like, there's just so much that can happen and so much that can kind of, like, escalate the fake it till you make it trend and idea. And we see fake it till you make it. Some people make it really far when they fake it till they make it. Like, for instance, that one woman, what's her name, Rachel something, who was the president of the NAACP, um, despite not being black and pretending to be black for years. And finally someone was like, hey, wait a minute, something isn't right here. And it was like, oh, I'm transracial. So stupid that people believed that. But we see so many people on the internet pretending to be black. <laughs> Is that shady of me to say? Is that shady of me to say that like there are so many people that pretend to be black? But we also hear the term, all the time. You gotta spend money to make money and that's capitalism, baby. If you type in fake it till you make it on Google like I did for this video, you see so many business websites like Business Insider, Forbes saying, don't do this. Don't fake it till you make it because you will not make it. You will just fake it and then you will be in debt and then you will ruin your life because debt is something that is very sneaky sneaky and will catch up to you. No matter what you do, we all have that in America. It's just what it is. But fake it till you make it is horrible financial advice and you should not follow that. And I am not a financial advisor, but I advise you to not be stupid with your money. But I think that this obsession with wanting to be, to appear to be something that you're not and wanting to appear to be more successful 
or more whatever. It's just really dumb, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This then leads me to a fun little family on YouTube. I'm sure you all know who they are because they've probably been all over your YouTube homepage for the past three years, but that is the Ace Family. Get it? Because they open the videos like, hey, Ace Family. I watched, I watched some of their videos back in the day, but family channels make you feel a little yucky. I have a video on it, I'm pretty sure. But the good old Ace Family, um, and I wouldn't say necessarily the Ace Family, more so Austin McBroom. He is getting sued um, for roughly a hundred million dollars. Million. So many zeros, I can't even count amount of lawsuits this man is getting right now. And also, allegedly, um, his house is on, or not his house, but his family's home is currently getting auctioned or is sent off to the bank, or I don't know how that stuff works, but apparently his nice luxury mega mansion is getting um, snatched by the bank. Isn't that lovely? Not lovely, but you know what I mean. Um, I think that the Ace family is such a extreme level of excess and overconsumption to the point that it's ridiculous, to the point to where it's like they're losing their house, that's kind of on them. You know, not the kids, but on the parents, spending all of that money that they didn't really need to. I think there's such this amount, this issue with a lot of influencers of spending above their means, spending exactly what they make. Like Trisha Paytas would say um, how they were spending exactly what they made. And that was why they appeared to have so much, but they were actually, you know, struggling financially. And I think that the Ace family is such an, ex like a good example of an influencer or influencer family who their content revolves around spending so much money, just like Mr. Beast or Rice Gum or any of the other internet flexors and spending that money. And I get that when your content is based around spending money, of course you're going to spend more money and you're going to, you know, find your ways and you know, all this stuff. But I just think that with the Ace family, this is an example of how it can get really, really bad. And I really hope that this is a lie. I hope that the Ace family is not, well, is keeping their house. And I hope that they do have the money to be able to pay back the money that they owe so many people. I really hope that that's the case and they're just stalling for funsies. But a part of me feels like that's not the case. Um, and I really hope that that whole situation gets sorted out because I feel really bad for those kids. I think that those kids deserve a nice loving home and I would not want to laugh at the misfortunes of a child, you know. Adults, that's one thing, but kids, like they can't control anything. They, they don't know they're in debt or not in debt, allegedly, did I put it on the screen? It's alleged. No one come for me. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough money to get sued. So this leads me into the next person, the next case we can look at. And that is Lisette Calviero. See, I wish I would have actually found out what, how to pronounce her last name before I did this. I'll fix it in the editing if it's wrong. So her name is actually Lisette Calviero. She said it in an interview, so I know I'm right. Um, and also she was able to pay off her debt. This has happened like five years ago. And she now has like a six figure business, like doing influencer coaching and stuff like that, which is so cool. So shout out to Lisette for actually faking it and making it. So you know what? She is the exception to the rule. But Miss Lisette, um, she is or slash was an Instagram influencer. And she actually was one of the first people to be vocal about how fake Instagram is and how a lot of in Instagram influencers are spending above their means and spending so much money and going into debt just for a few followers and brand deals. Yes. She was the first, if you remember like three years ago, she was a lady who was like, I'm $10,000 in debt because I wanted to be an Instagram influencer. I think this is another good example, not a good example, but an example of the thing that people have like this idea that they have to spend this money, that they have to do these things in order to be perceived as doing well off. 
you know, and then making people think that they're doing better than what they are, which I think that it's better to be more upfront about struggling. So as we know, three years ago, she did a tell all interview about how she was $10,000 in debt because of Instagram and basically wanting to be an Instagram influencer and kind of struggling <laughs> and the debt kind of piled up on her and we see so many times in life people get into credit card debt really really bad i've seen 10 ten thousand two hundred thousand five hundred thousand like i've seen some credit card debt like heavy um so definitely her story is minimal in comparison to how badly people in the u.s are in debt but she specifically said in her interview that she was confident that she would pay it off eventually, um, but had to do it quickly in order to live a peaceful life. And when I tell you debt piles up, like debt piles up. That's why people are so scared to get credit cards because it's like imaginary money that just piles up on you. And I think that what we can learn from Lisette is that you shouldn't have to spend so much money just to succeed. You shouldn't have to, in the way, spend money to make money. Like you shouldn't, you should just be authentic and be your authentic self and you could get so much more from growing an audience organically and perhaps maybe seeing you, you know, grow in wealth versus you trying to put off this idea that you're so rich, you shouldn't have to do that. That's not something that I think is positive i don't think that's good at all lastly the last idea or person that i wanted to talk about was glozelle now if you're like me and you've been on youtube forever you would have known of glozelle famously known for her cinnamon challenge um video that <laughs> went viral i remember i wanted to do the cinnamon challenge so bad my mom would not let me do it no matter how hard i begged and pleaded probably for a good reason but for the past year, Glozell has been talking about how, um, but being very open about the debt that she was in. Um, specifically, she said that she did 12 rounds of IVF, which she's so strong for doing that. Basically ended up accumulating about $200,000 in debt. Um, and despite being on YouTube and despite making money off of YouTube, doing these things, getting houses, getting cars, and definitely not to the level of excess as many other youtubers or influencers um of similar sizes um she was just like <laughs> she was accumulating debt and basically just hoping the money was going to come back eventually and i think that's also something that's very common it's like with the ace family like austin mcbroom saying that oh well i'm gonna make this money back and then didn't you know just like having so much faith inside of a platform that is low-key dying but also is not guaranteed we see so many people on youtube that have you know brand deals they have affiliate marketing they have other companies the reason why youtubers are doing that is not because they want to take over the world and they want to become classic celebrities it's because YouTube is not guaranteed. Glozell in, in one of her interviews said that, and this is something that I also want to kind of like tell all the girlies watching this video, um, she says that you're young and cute and you're spending money on these cars, but that doesn't last. There is always somebody cuter, younger, prettier, and funnier coming up, which is literally so important. Like our time is limited as always, everything is temporary, nothing is permanent. And I think that people have this idea that, you know, YouTube is never gonna go away. You see influencers living in those mega mansions with like 10 floors, like the Alyssa Violet song. No, but I'm saying like, you see them living in these influencer mansions, you see them living in content houses and you see them spending all this money doing all these things and renting houses for $600,000 a month, which is, God, it's so annoying. I, there was this one video that I saw of this one who guy who owns a content house and he spends so much money in um, rent every single month and it's like, just buy a house. <laughs> like, I think if, if think if you're spending more than $5,000 on um, something, you might as well own it. You know, that's just a thought process that I have, you know, um, unless you're living in like New York, I guess it's a little bit different. So I think that in general, we need to understand that faking it till you make it is something that 
we get told time and time again. We get told, you know, make money, you can do it. Toxic positivity, hustle culture. You see all of these things kind of feeding into you, literally almost dying just to make a lot of money. And then you spend all of that money and then you're back at the bottom. Like Sisyphus, you know, it's it's a constant cycle. It's capitalism. It is the world is like literally rooting against you (laughs) and like you have to try really hard to like not get swept up in the internet culture and everything that's happening so yeah it's just really important and I definitely don't want you to watch this video and get really depressed and think that your life is going to go downhill and you're never going to achieve anything fake it so you make it is something that we should at least think about in terms of like ourselves in terms of like our appearances or um, our confidence level, our inner beauty, you can kind of fake that so you make it, but you really can't fake it so you make it when it comes to million dollar mega mansions, you know, um, and spending money on trips and on Instagram posts and all that stuff. It can pile up and I don't want you at home to be in debt for the rest of your life over an Instagram picture or a YouTube video or something, you know, frivolous, but that is my video. <laughs> I hope you guys liked it and if you did make sure to give it a big thumbs up because it really really helps little little channels like mine. Make sure to also subscribe to me if you would like to though I'm not forcing you to and I would say typically subscribe for the bisexual lighting but it's not very bisexual today because it's really sunny out and the sun, it's just not working out for me but if I turn off the light then it's gonna be too dark and you won't be able to see my face so it's a back and forth situation but you know <laughs> support small creators like me um and I guess that's it I don't really have much else to say but um yeah make sure to stay happy stay healthy and stay safe and I'll catch you guys on the next one bye guys